Hey guys, Keaton here with TechSmart, and first things first, I'm the realist. I'm just kidding there, but I did announce the winners of the custom TechSmart edition uh, iPhone 5S, and I did announce the additional winners of the five t-shirts and the five lucky applicants that won one of those really cool t-shirts, which just says youtube.com slash tech. So if you did win uh, and did follow all the instructions, uh, and it was a blast doing this giveaway, I'll definitely be doing more. I'm sending you a YouTube private message, so be on the lookout for that. Just go to youtube.com slash messages. Uh, and just go ahead and keep an eye out on that if you did win. But the winners will be announced on Twitter. So go ahead and check there to see if you did win. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the best laptop choices for back to school students. And a lot of you guys really did enjoy the five back to school applications. So just help you learn better for both Android and iOS. And if you haven't seen that video, the link can be found right below that like button. But since so many of you guys have enjoyed the first video we put out, I'll keep putting out more series until I go to school and a little bit over that. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Chrome laptops, Mac laptops, and of course, Windows laptops. Let's get started. Up first here, we're going to talk about mid-priced Windows laptops, and the Asus VivoBook 13.3 inch is your best option for not only price, but what it really does offer. So it comes in at $599, obviously features Windows OS, comes with 6 gigabytes of RAM, a 13.3 inch display, and it features an Intel i5 processor. This guy is going to be snappy, it's going to be perfect for all your back to school needs, and as long as you're not doing too much video editing or just really pushing this thing to the limits, it's going to handle whatever you want and more. So this is a really great option, and it also comes with a touch screen, so if a touch screen is your kind of thing, you're definitely going to enjoy this laptop. So while the Asus VivoBook is my choice for the best Windows laptop for back to school. If you're not a fan of that, you're going to want to keep a few things in mind. Price is obviously the biggest thing here, and if it doesn't really fit in your budget, you're not going to splurge on the new laptop, but definitely look for a computer that features a 256 HHD or hard drive, an Intel i5 processor or i7 if you really want to live on the wild side, and at least 6 gigabytes of RAM. Trust me, when you get this computer in hand, you're going to notice that having these baseline specifications and just base components are really going to help you and allow that computer to last for a few years. So up next here is the Apple laptops, and while they're a little bit more expensive than your conventional laptop, they typically will hold up the longest. And don't get confused with how Apple brands their products and the wording that they choose. Just because it has the word Pro in its title doesn't mean it's the best laptop for you, and that's why I definitely recommend the MacBook Air for back to school students. So let's get some baseline requirements out of the way. You're going to want to have at least 4 gigabytes of RAM on this laptop specifically, and at least have 256 gigabytes of storage. Storage. Luckily for you, they all come with SSD storage, so this means your laptop is going to fly, load programs a lot quicker, and it's a lot faster than your traditional hard drive, which you might find on other laptops such as the Asus VivoBook. So with those specifications, you're going to get two options. You're going to get the 11-inch, which comes in at $1,100, or the 13-inch, which comes in at $1,200. And these laptops are fantastic, and I've been loving mine since I purchased it over a month ago. And don't get caught up in the wording. Just because it says Pro doesn't mean that's the professional level and that's what you're going to need for back to school because these MacBook Airs will most likely hold you and as long as you're not doing too much intensive work such as video editing, you're going to be fine and as long as you keep the tab count on your browser under 20, this thing should just run like a champ and the battery life on here is even better. So these laptops are great for pretty much anything but video editing. Now while I do run Final Cut Pro 10 on my MacBook Air 13 inch, it does run well but it's not going to export as quickly as you would see on a MacBook Pro. Pro, a PC, a custom built PC for that matter, or the iMac or Mac Pro, any type of computer that you're spending a substantial amount of money. While it does run Final Cut Pro 10 just fine and it will export what I need, it will take a lot longer and you're definitely going to see the battery life drain and the fans on the computer kick on. So if you're just browsing the web, editing some photos here and there, and taking notes and just doing the basic stuff, the MacBook Air is going to be perfect for you. And the 11 inch model gets around 9 hours of battery life, and the 13 inch model, get ready for this comes with 12 hours of battery life. Obviously, this will fluctuate depending on how much you are using it, and I watch a lot of Netflix, and I'm not really able to get 12 hours of battery life because that'd be crazy, and that's just fueling my addiction, but pricing right now gets even better. So right now, Best Buy is really doing an awesome promotion, and that's where I picked up my MacBook Air, strictly because of the discounts they were giving. So all their MacBook Airs are $100 off, which is pretty nice, but if you have a .edu email, uh, you get an additional $150 off, and since we're all really good at math here, that's $250. $50 off your MacBook Air, uh, and it's really only on uh, the MacBook Airs and a few other Windows computers, but that's again why I picked this guy up, because it was just so much heavily 
discounted. So let me break down the prices for you. For the 11 inch model, which has 128 gigabytes of solid state storage, four gigabytes of RAM, the i5, as all of these feature in i5, you're gonna be getting it for $649. Now, if you step up a little bit to the 256 gigabyte storage model, you're gonna get it for $849. And bumping over to the 13 inch model again with 128 gigabytes of solid state storage, four gigabytes of RAM, the i5 processor, you're gonna get to have it for $749. And if you go up just a little bit higher to the 256 gigabyte model, you're gonna get that guy for $949. That's under a grand, again, because we're all good at math and numbers here. And it's just a fantastic computer all around. And I picked this guy up for about $806 with tax. I didn't buy any of the Best Buy plans just because that's not my thing. Uh, but you can get a pretty sweet deal on a MacBook Air right now. So if the first two options really don't appeal to your mind and maybe the prices are just turning you off completely, check out the Chromebooks. So with the Chromebooks, it's a different type of philosophy in terms of what you can access. So you don't have Skype, Photoshop, Microsoft Word, anything like that, and most of the stuff that it allows you to do is just browse the internet and use a lot of Google services such as Google Drive, which does include presentations, creating documents, spreadsheets, etc. So again, if you're not really a big fan of Google Drive, then you're probably going to want to look at the Apple solution or the Windows solution. But the good news about the Chromebooks is their price and just kind of what they offer if you are a Google Drive user. So for the Chromebook option, I'd recommend the Acer C270 for its price and what it can really do, which is running Chrome OS. Let's Let's get one thing out of the way here. This laptop isn't going to win any design awards, but this laptop is quick, reliable, and will handle Chrome OS like a champ. So it features an 11 inch display, comes in at $199, features a dark gray body, and just really works. That's what you're buying this laptop for, a laptop that can get what you want done. And if I didn't buy this MacBook Air and I just really wanted to take notes, create a presentation here and there, browse the internet, I probably would have purchased a Chromebook uh, and probably purchased one of the cheaper models. And a lot of schools purchase these laptops for their students because they're cheap, reliable, and they just get the job done. Again, they're just running Chrome OS, so if your school really does use a lot of Google services, this laptop is definitely for you. But chances are, if this is your first time hearing about a Chromebook, I'd say hold off on purchasing one. Head over to Best Buy or your retailer that does feature Chromebooks and just play around with it for five or 10 minutes and just understand what it can do uh, and just kind of get the grasp that all you can really do is just browse the web and use Google services. Thank you guys so much for watching this video where we talked about the best laptop choices for students heading back to school. If you guys are curious on pricing and availability, the link can be found in the description below. And be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this video and want me to continue the back to school series. Also, while you're at it, drop me a comment down below letting me know what kind of laptops you guys use for school or just academic purposes. And if you don't use a laptop, what do you guys use to stay ahead in school? Finally, go and subscribe to the channel to be notified when a brand new back to school video comes out or something else cool in the realm of tech. Thank you guys once again, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Mm -hmm.